Hey there, fishing autos. Uh, Kevin here from NOAA, uh, Northern Ontario Aquarium Hobby. Uh, welcome to the new video. So in today's video, uh, I wanted it to be sort of a little bit of a, a connection to the last video. Uh, as you know, that's been going around and I've been uh, surfing around on the forums and everything like that. One question uh, sort of keeps coming up for some people uh, and I just wanted to bring a little bit of clarity to it. So it's what is the difference really between low-tech and high-tech tanks? Uh, now there's a wide variety of definitions and uh, some people draw the line one place and some people draw the line others. So I'm going to give you at least um, what I think that line is and uh, what makes the difference between a low-tech and a high-tech tank. Now, as I said, there is a lot of variations between, I think, one of the at least main dividing lines that most people can generally agree on between what makes a low-tech tank and what makes a high-tech tank is uh, a CO2 injection, carbon dioxide. Um, again, there's some fussing about uh, people saying that it's only high tech if you are um, using pressurized CO2 versus do-it-yourself CO2. And, you know, I might agree with that uh, in some ways. Um, uh, a pressurized CO2 is definitely much higher tech than a do-it-yourself. But we're going to use that sort of as that dividing line, a, a CO2 injection. Um, again, in, it's such a hard, it's such a hard discussion to have because there's so many things. Uh, do it yourself. The CO2 injection, I, I, in my opinion, can go on either side of the argument. But at least true full high tech is definitely uh, the introduction of full pressurized CO2. Now another thing to consider in uh, the divide between low and high tech is uh, I think. Uh, Fertilizer dosing, not whether you're doing it at all specifically, but the amounts that you're doing. If you're doing something like uh, um, an uh, estimated uh, index uh, dosing, uh, you know, popularized by Tom Barr, where uh, essentially you're kind of overdosing uh, ferts uh, to a certain extent, uh, just to make sure that uh, fertilization is not your limiting factor, so that everything is possibly available that the plants could need and then doing a, a large water change, usually about 50% a week, to reset those values. Uh, again, I think that that sort of dosing definitely falls within the realm of a high tech. Uh, now, some people do use it in what they consider low tech uh, because they, they prefer the fertilizers uh, over CO2 or something like that. But again, once you start getting into uh, measuring out massive dosing and everything like that beyond what you might see on the bottle of um, Seachem Flourish or, or Thrive or something like that, uh, once you start getting into measuring those different dosages, uh, it, it takes on a little bit more of a scientific uh, feel about it. Uh, I know people who've been doing uh, EI dosing, say, for a while, uh, you know, they're just so used to it, and it's like nothing scientific about it. You take a scoop of this, a scoop of that, and there you go. But ultimately, I think it still has a little bit more involved in it than just sort of going counting out uh, the threads on your uh, uh, on your cap from your fertilizer, uh, pouring it out and dumping it in. Again, that's not to say that uh, that sort of heavy dosing doesn't have its place in low tech. Uh, again, it's just trying to, to to draw a dividing line for people who you know might be uh, just getting into the hobby or just starting to get into uh, understanding fertilizer dosing and everything like that. Um, something that I mean we all need to consider in the hobby when uh, achieving balance in our tanks is obviously uh, the higher your lighting the higher your CO2 must be and the higher your fertilizer dosing must be because they all have to sort of come up together because as we all know any imbalance uh, in a tank in those basic parameters can cause algae issues can cause uh, uh, issues in plants dying uh, or just browning not thriving so again, uh, as you start to move from low tech to high tech, uh, those, those bars get raised each time. Um, 
and working in a low tech, you know, there's a little bit less to consider because, okay, you might not be injecting CO2 or you're doing um, do-it-yourself CO2 uh, instead. And, it, you know, it's keeping those parameters sort of in a little bit of a lower bar area. Now, uh, some people do, in, in lower tech, do fertilizer dosing without CO2 uh, to achieve those uh, extra nutrients and allow the, uh, uh, the plants to just uh, accept the CO2 uh, available from uh, biomass um, coming from the fish uh, uh, decomposition uh, uh, photosynthesis from your plants. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people do, uh, uh, again popularized by Diana Wallstad, uh, who uh, we'll get to in a moment, uh, was having sort of a midday siesta in, in their lighting. Now, that siesta period, uh, as I said, uh, uh, on again, off again, on again, and uh, different people's uh, rates vary. Uh, like I, for instance, usually have uh, uh, some of my tanks on for four hours during the day, off for four hours, and then on for four hours. Now, the reason for that sort of midday siesta, that time of turning off the lights, obviously is because uh, when plants are photosynthesizing in your aquarium, you know, uh, during the day, uh, during the light period, they're taking in CO2 and producing oxygen, uh, whereas in the uh, dark period, they're uh, um, taking in oxygen and putting out CO2. So by having that uh, period of rest during the day, it allows the plants to create more CO2 naturally uh, in the environment so that when you turn the lights back on, it's got a burst uh, of CO2 for the plants to uh, photosynthesize and to use as fuel again. So uh, it's sort of a, a, a very low-tech natural way of injecting CO2 into your tank just through uh, the respiration of your plants. So lighting also comes to play in the dividing line between uh, low-tech and high-tech uh, in some cases. Um, again, low-tech typically because uh, it doesn't have a CO2 injection or necessarily a, a high fertilizer uh, dosing regime, uh, as you would see in uh, a high-tech tank, uh, the lighting usually can get away with being uh, a little bit less. You don't necessarily have to have uh, really high lighting because, again, as lighting goes up, CO2 injection must go up, fertilizer dosing must go up. And so in a low-tech tank, uh, you'll see a lot of um, people using just uh, very basic low-level lighting. Uh, again, another video that we're going to have will be uh, examining the benefits of the different types of lighting and the different methods of understanding how to use them. Uh, but in a low-tech tank, typically you're going to see uh, what people usually consider to be uh, easier growing plants. Now this is where I start to differ from some people because uh, whereas there are definitely some plants that you have to have uh, CO2 injection and high fertilizer uh, dosing for them to uh, thrive or survive. Uh, but as I said in, in one of the last videos, there's a difference between what's considered uh, healthy growth and optimal growth. Again, sort of speaking uh, as an instance, uh, uh, I mean, there will be a video again about uh, different plants, uh, high tech versus low tech, or some of the easier plants to start off with. But, uh, you know, a lot of people will consider, say, uh, your Java ferns or uh, wisteria. Uh, Amazon swords to be some of your uh, easy uh, low-tech uh, plants, easy to grow because typically they don't require a lot of lighting, they don't require a lot of extra lighting, and, and, and that's absolutely true. Um, now, some people, again, in the hobby, they, they take a look at some plants that will thrive with CO2 dosing and immediately put them into the high-tech category, you know, uh, something along the lines of uh, uh, HC Cuba you know, for a nice carpeting uh, plant. Uh, now, again, the difference between healthy growth and optimal growth. Uh, in the 45 gallon that uh, I usually have behind me, there's a carpet of HC, and this is a very low tech tank uh, because it doesn't have CO2 and it doesn't have uh, fertilizer dosing of any kind. And I'm still able to carpet with it. Now, the leaves do take on a slightly different appearance. You know, they're a little bit larger and they, they don't lay down quite as much uh, as they do in a in a, a CO2 injected tank. However, that doesn't mean that there's not healthy growth because I still have to trim it 
uh, once a week or so. Maybe I don't trim it uh, two, three times a week as some people who are carpeting it in uh, a high CO2 injection uh, tank in a high tech, but it's still growable. So there are some definite gray areas. Uh, in the tank I've got behind me here, uh, this is uh, a very low tech setup. Again, no CO2, uh, no fertilizers or dosing of any kind. And it's actually a cold water tank because of the fish that I've got in there. And I mean, uh, I don't know how much of it's showing up in camera, but uh, just back here is uh, Ultramantera Rhinecki Mini, which a lot of people consider to be a high tech plant. Now, it's not as red or as vibrant as it can be uh, when you have proper uh, CO2 levels or light levels or uh, dosing, uh, mainly uh, uh, irons to bring out those rich red colors. However, it is still red. It is still growing. And now again, it's stretching a little bit taller than it would in a high-tech situation. It's getting a little bit more leggy, but that is uh, uh, still just an indicator of the way the plants behave in a high-tech or a low-tech environment. So as you can see, there's many variations of, of plants uh, that can go either high-tech or low-tech. Um, now, it comes down to considering uh, what the benefits of either of uh, those methods are, high-tech or low-tech. Um, I mean, I touched on this in the, in the last video a, a little bit. And again, these are, these are my opinions based on, on uh, uh, sort of where I think the dividing line is and what I think the benefits, the pros and cons should be. But this is your hobby, uh, as I said. Uh, choose what you want to do, what you want to accomplish with this hobby. So just sort of take what I'm saying, what other people are saying, uh, and piece it together for yourself. Now, as I said in the last video, uh, the, the two main things that do come up in the difference between a low-tech and a high-tech tank is cost, either financial or time. Uh, a low-tech tank uh, usually requires uh, much less maintenance. I mean, you still have to be doing your, your water changes, but say uh, weekly 20% is, is usually fairly uh, uh, good. Some people do it a little bit longer. I like to do 20% a week, you know, just to, to help keep things fresh and to fight off any possibilities of instabilities in the water. Uh, now with a high-tech tank, you know, uh, because you're getting this optimal growth with all this fertilizer dosing, and as, as I said, in something like, a, like an EI uh, fertilizer dosing regime where you're dumping, a tons of ferts, dumping tons of fertilizers in, uh, usually you have to do at least a 50% water change a week in order to reset those values and then re-add more uh, fertilizer. Uh, and also with CO2, uh, again, we're getting into optimal growth phase where those plants are just exploding and they're bursting uh, forth and you have to do a lot more trimming in order to just keep your tank looking nice so it doesn't get overgrown. Now that's, that's a wonderful thing if that's what you want to get out of the hobby. You know, if, if that sort of fullness is what you want to achieve, you want to achieve it fast. High tech definitely achieves results quickly. Low tech, it's a little bit more patient. Now, uh, Again, this is my opinion on, on things, but low tech can, in some ways, be a little bit more difficult at times because you have to definitely establish that balance first. And you know, you're, you, you've got very little parameters in terms of using maybe a lower light uh, uh, and no fertilizer dosing or low fertilizer dosing and either no CO2 or just uh, uh, small amounts in, in uh, uh, do-it-yourself CO2. And finding that balance can sometimes take some time. You can run into some algae issues. Uh, now, in my experience, I found it's, it's much easier to get it under control in a low-tech tank than it is in a high-tech tank. Now, the big reason I feel that it's easier to get those things under control in a low-tech tank than a high-tech tank is because again, by bumping up your CO2, by bumping up your fertilizer, uh, and by bumping up your lighting, you have a lot, there are a lot more uh, parts of, of each to consider. So if, if you know, say your, your regulator on your CO2 tank goes down, uh, and you don't notice, and all of a sudden you have this massive CO2 shift, you know, that causes instability, right? All of a sudden you, your, your, your CO2 is dropped, but your ferts and your lights stay high. And so that causes an instability and can lead to uh, algae outbreaks. Or likewise, uh, 
you run out of the fertilizers that you're supposed to be uh, uh, putting in on a regular basis uh, and you're waiting for more to come in, you don't have something to replace it. And I mean, planning ahead is obviously necessary, but sometimes it happens. You know, you're expecting something to come in and it doesn't. So all of a sudden again, then your fertilizer drops and your CO2 and your lighting stays high. And so that causes instability. So you would have to then adjust your lighting and adjust your CO2 to bring it down to meet this parameter and then bring them up. So there's a lot of back and forth going on all the time between these and it can be tricky. I mean, there are, if you've got a high tech system running and running well and you're used to sort of the, uh, the rhythm of it and, and you've got your balance in, then they can kind of take care of themselves uh, in a sense as much as a low tech tank can. But finding that initial balance and fighting against uh, instability can be a really difficult and time-consuming uh, issue. Now, again, just from personal experience uh, and seeing people on the forums, when I'm talking to people on the, the, the low-tech plant-to-tank forums versus the high-tech plant-to-tank forums, invariably, there's more questions on the high-tech forums about how do I deal with this algae outbreak or how do I deal with this than there is on the low-tech. Now, that's not necessarily saying that it's a con. Again, it's what you want to do, but it does hint to uh, some potential difficulties that you may face moving into the high-tech situation. And the reason I'm saying these things, again, is because, uh, you know, when you're going on forums, when you're just new to the hobby, and you, uh, I mean, you don't know, you see an aquascaping forum uh, or, or Facebook group, and, uh, you know, before you understand certain terminology or something, uh, you, you, you jump right into it and you ask for information. Now, people in high-tech forums, of course, are going to give you high-tech answers, you know, and if you don't really know enough to go, okay, wow, someone says, oh, you gotta get this, you gotta get that, you gotta get that, you know, and they're saying that in order to achieve the results that they have achieved, you need to do these things, and they're not incorrect, but it might not be what you want to accomplish. But so someone coming new to the hobby can look at that and go, oh my God, and just run out and get this and get that and get that. And then there's a chance that someone who, you know, was really just looking to have a planted tank rather than a, a lush aquascape or a Dutch, you know, is all of a sudden getting overwhelmed looking at the bill because, you know, setting up a high tech tank from the ground level up, it's it's not unusual that, yeah, you're dropping at least a thousand bucks right out of the bat. You know, and uh, that can be really daunting for someone getting into the hobby. It's like who perhaps was just a fish keeper before, you know, or uh, uh, keeping community fish with plastic plants. Going, oh, you know, I, I had good, did my whole set for thirty bucks, and all of a sudden you're talking about a thousand. You know, when they're looking to be implanted. Now, conversely, someone who's looking to set up uh, uh, a, a tank uh, that they want that lush growth. You know, they see those uh, a model tanks. Um, or Dennis Wong's tanks, or you know James Findlay, or, or or anything like that, you know, and they see this beautiful lush growth, you know, if they if they stumble upon a, a low tech uh, forum, you know, where people are like, oh, you know, uh, a little bit more easy going about it, you know, as long as you do this uh, simple thing with this, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be able to grow, and then people get frustrated because they're not seeing this explosive uh, growth and this mass coloring and everything like that, and so again. It, uh, understanding what you want out of the hobby, but also uh, for those of us who are on the forums, perhaps asking people out of the back, well, what, what did you want to accomplish here? Like, what, what were you hoping to achieve? And maybe direct them saying, well, you know, these questions might be better uh, to low-tech people and direct them to a low-tech forum or, or direct someone who's on a low-tech to a high-tech. You gotta be uh, gentle about it because you don't want to scare people away and go, oh, well, you know, ah, you're not getting your answers here, go over there. Uh, sort of thing, you know, because we want to be as welcoming to as many people in the hobby as we can. Um, but that being said, again, there's mm, the, the biggest pros and cons, again, I find uh, are one, cost. You know, low tech planted tanks, uh, they still can be costly, but typically they're going to cost much less. Uh, uh, low tech tanks require less time commitment in terms of maintenance. Uh, and low tech tanks, historically, at least as a general rule, are a little bit easier to maintain in terms of keeping your parameters stable. And now the pros for a high-tech tank is, uh, you know, you're going to get lush, lush growth 
undoubtedly you're going to see some wonderful uh, plant growth and everything like that. Um, you're going to you're 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 going to have this sort of greater sense of accomplishment uh, uh, faster. You know, high tech tanks grow plants bigger faster. Simply said. But again, there is going to be a higher cost involved. And if you're okay to put that cost in, run with it. You know, do it. Don't skimp out. You know, there's we we never really talk about mid tech. Uh, they sort of have that dividing line between low tech and high tech. Uh, but a mid tech is you know you're you're getting some some do it yourself or some cheaper alternatives to achieve the same results. And I am all for that about saving the dollar and everything like that. Uh, and you can still achieve some of those high tech results using cheaper options. However, you may run into putting out more money in the long run, uh, because if you invest in something uh, high quality to begin with, you're typically less likely to run into issues with that equipment down the road. Whereas if you go to something mid uh, tech or uh, sorry, mid priced, you know, you may run into technical issues and have to put out uh, more money over the long term. Uh, so, you know, again, high-tech tanks take a lot more time and a lot more money, but they achieve faster and more vibrant results. Low-tech tanks uh, take less money, take less time, but you have to be a little bit more patient with it. You know, you, 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 you might struggle to grow certain plants, and certain plants may take a while to really take off and thrive for you. So again, what do you want to do with it, and, and what are you willing to put into it financially or time-wise? and how much do you want to necessarily be chasing parameters. These are all things you want to consider, low tech versus high tech. Both are uh, have amazing and widespread variations in the hobby. I never really got back to talking about a complete no tech, which is a Diana Wall stand style tank, uh, uh, no tech uh, uh, sort of in parentheses because there is, or in quotations rather, because there is uh, some tech involved at times and, and some uh, basic scientific understanding. But uh, I, I think I'm going to devote an entire video to the, the Wallstad method. Uh, for those of you who are in the low tech uh, and want to go even lower tech, and for those of you who are in the high tech and looking to maybe dial things back because of cost and time commitments. So I got to run for now. And again, uh, as always, hit that subscribe button down there. Uh, join up uh, so you get uh, all the latest up to news. Uh, um, videos on tips and tricks. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff coming up in the new year. I'm not going to say anything more about that, uh, but a little bit of teaser. There's some really cool projects uh, coming up that uh, you're going to get to see, um, as well as some cool developments uh, uh, for me in the hobby uh, that I think uh, you'll all uh, out there be very interested in. So again, stay tuned. Uh, hit subscribe. Comment down below. Please get the dialogue going. Share. Uh, you'll see me on the forums. Uh, um, you know, ask the questions and dive right in.